Some of y'all may be on a journey of being spiritually awakened and then awakened to all of the things that you may have thought were true in your life that you discover are not so true. That makes a different type of awakening. Like a lot of people that have been coming here and that comment and watch us understand their belief in money is not what they thought it was. They didn't understand that it's just printed from nothing. It's backed by nothing other than our perceptions. A lot of people did not realize, especially after the video we made a few weeks ago, that we have done atrocities to people in the name of science and progress by the Tuskegee experiment, for example. And a lot of people were shocked, especially some of the uh, Die hard fundamental Christians that there's over 75 books of the Bible that were just excluded at the Council of Nicaea. That was a very big eye opening experience. And Jill, my lovely wife, who is joining us today, has been going through her own spiritual awakening and then awakening to a whole myriad of things in her life, and it has been a struggle. Sometimes when these things happen, you start to become aware of what's going on around you and inside of you it becomes harder to relate to people because they're not, well, they just don't know the same things. They haven't been introduced to the same um, notions that make you go down your own study, your own rabbit hole to discover things. And it makes it difficult. Has it been difficult for you, babe? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I am guilty of being ignorant. No, um, you are not. Yes. But when I think of ignorance, I don't necessarily think of stupid, even though it's a synonym. I think more of being unknowledgeable about it, being untaught. Did that make you irritated? Because I was irritated you know, 15, 20 years ago when I started to realize most everything that I've ever learned uh, was a lie. Oh, of course. And we just told Noah the other day, just uh, scratch everything I've ever taught you and relearn <laughs> all of it. <laughs> <laughs> but it goes back. Let's go back to the beginning. We're handed this prescription before we even come out of the womb. Um, what religion we're going to be or know, or if we're even going to have a religion, our education, um, what language we're going to speak. This is all given to us before we even come out of the womb. And it's just passed down from generation to generation. It's no fault of our parents. That's just how they were taught, what they learned, what their parents learned. And it's just passed down. So we learn from our parents. We learn from our teachers. We learn from the government. That's interesting you say that. I had a conversation with my mother uh, about a year ago. And I said, Mom, you do realize that if you were born in the Middle East, you would be a Muslim? Right. Like, I would not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty sure you would. <laughs> pretty, pretty damn sure you would. And, you know, if you were born in Israel, you're probably going to be a Jew. It's If you're born in the United States, you're probably going to be a Christian. If you're born in India, you're going to be Buddhist or Hindu. That, those are choices you really don't make on your own. And then when you start doing deep dives into your own religion, no matter which one it is, you start to find so many similarities of how they were purposefully designed to control the masses. And that's kind of eye-opening because, you know, we are, I went to a Catholic boarding school, went to Baptist uh, elementary schools, and, you know, you think you got a handle on the Bible. You know, like, I, you think you do. I thought, you know, I know Noah's Ark, I know Adam and Eve, you know, King David, all these things. You're like, oh, yeah, I, of course I know them. I studied them in Sunday school. And then you actually go read it, and you're like, holy crap. I mean, there are countless passages where Jehovah says, stab pregnant women in the bellies. And you're like, what? <laughs> like it's, it's unbelievable, the atrocities. But we cherry pick those. You know, they were, they were left out of my religious upbringing. All of those atrocities, all of the, they skip around and connect unconnected books and unconnected passages to each other and make you feel good. And if people get spiritual enlightenment that way, like they feel good, then fine. Like I, I don't, there's nothing wrong with, uh, to me, there's nothing wrong with that, except when it becomes so divisive that, uh, like there's some people that leave comments like, you know, if you're going to leave them, I don't read them anymore. So just write your heart out. The, uh, 
<laughs> or you're going to go straight to hell because you, uh, you have questions about Jesus. Okay, well, I have questions about government, too. Am I going to be look, uh, locked up in the gulags? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. Uh, well, good luck. <laughs> good, good luck. It's a strange phenomenon that we have raised a society of people, and purposefully so, to not question anything. And whenever you do question, because I started asking my preacher, well, actually my priest at boarding school, this is where questions really started for me. It's like, well, infinity is a really long time. Like, we can't even wrap our minds around 10,000 years ago, right? Like, you can't really think how long 10,000 years is. And then infinity is billions upon billions upon trillions upon trillions of years that we can't wrap our minds around. And so infinity would be like taking all the beaches in the world and you take one little speck of sand and you say, this is your life. And then you have all of that sand that stretches out all across and past the world, past the moon, past the sun. It's just a speck of time. And so this little speck of time, if you do something against some law and some book, then you're going to be cast in eternity of fire and brimstone for that speck when all the other specks exist that make this one non-measurable. Like non-measurable. You cannot measure it. There's no way to measure our lifespan of 100 years, maybe if you're lucky, against infinity. It's an impossibility. So there's no measurement. And so I find that a scare tactic. I find it where we should, if we know we only have this spec, then wow, should we embrace it? Should we love it? We know we're only here for a very finite spirit, uh, period of time. It's uh, like me and Dean have said a few times talking that when we think about friends, we should call them, we should text them, we should love them. We should embrace our loved ones like my wife and cherish those moments because none of us truly know what happens when we die. We have our own ideas, our very own unique ideas. There's roughly there's 7 billion people on the planet, so there's about 7 billion different ideas about what's going to happen when you die. And going into ignorance is bliss, I think it is for a lot of people because they can just go, well, I have Buddha, I have Krishna, I have Allah, I have Jesus, and that's all they need to know. So for them, ignorance is bliss. I am one of those people that say, uh, I need to kind of figure this out a little bit more than that. I need to have some sort of understanding of how and what this particular thing came to be that's been force-fed to me the entirety of my life so that my soul, my spirit, my own relationship with myself, people around me, and my connection to the infinite, I have a better understanding of it and I can, it's more meaningful to me than what I've been force fed. That's what I have to say about that. Well, I think when you question stuff, you're told to sit down, shut up, and just believe it. Oh yeah, I was told that my entire life. When preachers, pastors, uh, anybody that couldn't answer the questions, it's not your place to ask these questions. Like, what do you mean it's not my place? Like, that, that would infuriate me. Luckily, I've been doing self-work, so I don't get so infuriated anymore. I have a spiritual guide. His name is Matt Giddens. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, it, it's a fascinating uh, thing, and especially with uh, governments themselves. And when you start to learn all of the things that are government uh, along with the censorship like a lot of our videos get shadow banned and we will put some videos out for this uh, geographical location and they will prevent that because we're talking about topics that uh, they don't particularly like a uh, little horse fly that's gonna so, hurt so it, it's a strange phenomenon that we are, are squashing the human spirit and i think squashing the human spirit has started to backfire because so many people are becoming awakened. It's not a critical mass, but there are people that are questioning, okay, why are you going after people uh, for censorship? Like, why do you, doesn't it make sense for us if we don't want to live in the bliss of ignorance that we should listen to all ideas, all sides, and let the truth bubble up? Because the truth will always find the light. But no, Johnny, you sit down and shut up. Don't ask me a question. I would like to think that I would have awakened over the past three years because if people don't awaken after this scandemic, <laughs> they're likely not going to. 
Um, I agree with that. You go to a restaurant. You can only sit down and take your mask off. You can only get co the virus. <laughs> yeah. You can only get the virus if you stand up. You can only get the virus if you go to the bar after 10 o'clock. You can only get the virus um, at the big chain places, not the small businesses. I mean, you can only get the virus at the, the, small, the business. small businesses and not the big chains. Those got to stay open. You still got to go shop there. Yeah, it's a scam. And if you can't see it, it's a scam. I mean, just like uh, I, I just thought it was funny uh, before, you know, like four years ago, it was a big deal for OSHA that if you wore a face covering that after some time, I think it was 15 minutes. I don't remember exactly. You, you can find it, obviously, if any of you have an interest. Is you had to take it off because uh, the levels uh, you're polluting yourself and your lungs, and you have to take it off. We have a safety guy here. He probably knows that. And so you, uh, it's like a mosquito flying, trying to keep a mosquito out of going through a chain link fence. It's a silly notion, and people fall for it, and they're everywhere, especially in big cities. Because people that live in big cities, and I know a lot of y'all live in big cities, and y'all need to get out. Y'all need to earth. Y'all need to fill the earth. You need to be get dirty. And you need to be in tune with nature because you are getting disconnected in a big way. We forget where our food comes from. You ask a young kid where a steak comes from, and they're going to say, oh, Walmart or Kroger <laughs> or some, something. It's silly. You say, oh, where, where, does your, uh, where do your French fries come from? And yeah, McDonald's. Like, they have no idea that that's even a potato that grows in the ground. Like, how, how far removed from the blueprints of life do we have to be before we can be guided into anything that the powers that be want us to go? It's scary. It, it's a scary proposition. And that nobody questions the industrial waste that is fluoride that's being dumped into the water supplies to calcify our pineal gland and it's okay to medicate people at any level because some people drink more or less tap water and it's in bottled water too uh, i almost uh had to stop myself because you just want to go what are you an idiot have, have you ever seen uh the test of bottled water there's, there's just as much crap in the, that as there is in uh tap water just about it's insanity i mean we have just a, a an amazing resource of life around us that we pollute we, we're destroying our bodily temple with crap that we watch, the brainwashing that we take in. And so, yeah, it's bliss for a lot of people because they can get on their TikToks. we got another friend here that likes just to lose his mind at TikTok. He can just sit here and flip through and just, oh, I, I'm so, I, I, you know, my, my mind, I can't think about anything else. i got to be entertained. Are you not entertained? Well, that's bliss. Strip away their freedom and still they'll roar. <laughs> that's right. Strip away their freedom and still their roar. Well, they can't wait to go to some some game. I'm sure there's some of y'all out there. I hate you. I'm never going to watch your channel again. Yeah, you're, uh, you're bread and circus. Yeah, go to your football game. And you know, what is the Federal Reserve? Where does money come from? Yeah, where does money come from? Oh, I'd rather know who passed X, Y, and Z or kicked a ball or played like a monkey and dunk something. I mean, we're, we're, it's insane. Like, it's truly insane that the conversation levels in this country are, are have plummeted to such a level. Uh, it, it's sad. But I don't think ignorance is bliss. I, I think ignorance is um, it's a false sense of bliss because uh, we have uh, two friends here that are from uh, the side of the world that's having also, we're not going to mention it because uh, I'm sure YouTube will, will stop us like they've done many times. On the side of the world, we're having some kind of conflict, not the conflict that happened yesterday or the day before. And um, they had gulags. They starved people to death. And you know what? Right before they starved everybody to death, everybody was on that train. Everybody was saying the same narrative. Everybody is, you know, Stalin's great. Lenin was great. Oh, oh, Trotsky. Oh, yay, 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 yay. I love you. Can you please, please tell me more bullshit? Can you please kill me faster? <laughs> it's just truly insane. And you try to have, I mean, half these people don't even know who Trotsky or Linsky. I mean, he's sitting in front of me. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's, uh, it, it's amazing because I don't think the grand creator, the source of all things, wants us to be stupid. I just don't believe that the Creator wants us to be ignorant. I believe, firmly believe, 
that our minds and our critical thinking were given to us for a reason. And that reason is to damn use it. It's just like any muscle. If you don't exercise it, you know, if you don't like to read, well, after that first page, you get tired. Well, that's fine. Put it down. It's just like working out. You know, after you burn out your biceps or your chest, all right, well, you, you, you'll be stronger next time. You can do it again. You can read two pages the next time. Uh, if you can't have long form conversation without getting to sleep, without having to check your phone, without having to, oh God, I can't pay attention because I need to do this thing or that thing. Or I'm like Ricky and I got to bounce around, but he's doing real good today. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, all, all these things, because we've trained ourselves to have zero attention spans and live in, uh, in the bliss of ignorance. And I think it is a one of those fundamental sins that were not written in the Bible or the Quran or the uh, Bhagavad Gita or any of these religious texts. Hey, use your mind. Just use your mind. And that's what you've been doing over the past couple of years. I mean, you used it your whole life, but I mean, you've uh, been introduced to some ideas that have made you go, wow. Can't believe I, I never thought about that. I have my own little library now. <laughs> <laughs> I am really learning some history. Yeah, and not the history that they teach you in school. Right. And, and like, uh, you never really think about the educational system. I mean, it's just a jail. Uh, my dad said, oh, man, I love public schools were great because, you know, we got to socialize. And I'm thinking, really, that's the only place you could socialize was going to school? <laughs> like, like, that's it. You, you never talk to anybody else anywhere. Uh, just school. Uh, OK. All right, Pops. Uh, the bell rings. You're conditioned to get up, hurry up, and run to the next place. You have to ask for permission to go to the bathroom because you're not a human. You know, you know when you have to pee. You know whenever you're thirsty. Please, please, you're, you're conditioned to submit to authority from the time you were born until you're dead. And that is by design. And it just takes a little bit of research into the history of public schools to understand that. that I'm not saying they're not a great many wonderful teachers. There's a great, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that they're ignorant to the fact of how it was started, how it was created, and how it's continued to be perpetrated onto the mass. So I would suggest you do a little research into that yourself. Don't live in ignorance. I have a couple of people that I'm related to that are close relatives that are teachers and uh, <laughs> it's just hideous. Well, I was so humiliated, humiliated in the third grade because I had to pee and I have my hand up in the air, just waving it, trying to get somebody's attention to ask permission to go to the bathroom and I peed. It's picture day, had on my little brown and red dress and there was pee all over the floor so I was completely humiliate, humiliated um, obviously things have haven't changed yeah. <laughs> still pee my pants <laughs> <laughs> thanks five kids yeah, <laughs> yeah we dehumanize uh, these young kids and then we train them that you're the most valuable asset to you is uh, learning how to play ball instead of exercising your mind and it is a disease. Like we need the athleticism. We, we need to do those things. But the way it has been set up is uh, it is absurd on every level. On every level. Like kids should get together and play ball and have a good time and really enjoy each other, do all the physicalities. But now it's so organized and, and so regulated that they're no longer kids. You're stealing away the fun. And then now you're training them that, hey, this is fun. This is what you should be doing. You should be treating this this way instead of just being kids, having fun, playing ball. It's insanity. I suggest just learn martial arts so you can uh, be physically uh, inclined to protect yourself. But if we don't have spiritual self-defense, mental and intellectual and emotional self-defense, uh, we're going to continue to perpetrate uh, a lot of nonsense in the world. And to have financial self-defense in a very uncertain world. And it's difficult to guess what's ever gonna happen at any one moment. We're all flying blind through this thing called life. And if we don't come together in, in communities, if we don't come together with good close friends and create very solid bonds that in good times and in bad times that we're there for each other. And that's the big effort that I'm working on here is to create these bonds that we get together regularly, not even, uh, I mean, of course, every Sunday, but to be friends. Like, I go do stuff with these people all the time. And I think that is important to, you know, Benjamin Franklin said it right. You know, if you have one friend your entire life, it's a gift. Like, it's unbelievable. If you have three or four, it's unheard of. 
like you're a rarity. So if we have community that is working on each other, that can start to understand, and I get offended by every single little thing. Oh, you know, this person said shit. Oh God, I don't. Uh, or, or this person said something about being a teacher. Oh God. Oh God, you said something about Christianity. Oh God. Like it's insane, people. Like we should be able to have conversations so we can figure out and, and find the truth for ourselves with our mind that the Creator gave us. And to live in ignorance to me is, is a sin against myself, it's a sin against the people I love, and it is a sin against God Himself, or Herself, or both. <laughs> Talk to me, baby. Talk to me. Well, so when you awaken, you unsubscribe from the Matrix. And you've told me this a million times, and I heard Peter Crone say it the other day too, um, and I'll have to read because I don't remember what it said, but he said, there are none, none are so self-righteous as the newly converted. So when people discover it, then they're like, it's so obvious. You cannot unsee it once you see it. Yeah, you cannot unsee bullshit. Like, oh, that really- You know what's bullshit. going on. <laughs> yeah, you cannot unsee the things once you know. I think that's one of the reasons why the uh, scamdemic was able to be so successful because people are mostly unaware that the United States uh, government put syphilis in thousands of black men and went untreated just as a test. Uh, it's why they uh, flooded people unknowingly with LSD to see if it was actually a true serum. Uh, did all of these uh, tests to unwilling and unknowing people since World War II. And it's crazy. Like, if people don't even realize NASA was started. It was Operation Paperclip. We brought all these Nazi scientists over from after World War II. Instead of them going to the Nuremberg trials and going to kill them, we brought them back here. Like, Warner Von Braun, he's the one who started NASA. He was one of Hitler's leading guy. Like, NASA started by the Nazis. Like, it's crazy. And it's, and this is not like hidden from anybody, it's right in front of everybody's face. And nobody knows, so you, and you see all these crazy things that have happened and nobody knows about them. So they're like, oh no, our government would never do this. I mean, uh, doctors get maybe, if they're lucky, one semester class of nutrition, a medical doctor? That's insane. Everything is, hey, take this pill. Hey, take this pill, this will make you better. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and pass, I'm gonna pass on mine. But I'm glad you're not ignorant and a dumbass because you're awesome. You're like the smartest person ever. And it is amazing to be around people that want to open their eyes, open their hearts, open their soul, and have conversations with people to connect and realize that we're not so separated, that we're much more alike than we are apart. We are the divine spark, each of us, from the Creator. And we have to use that. We have to nurture that because it's so easy to be negative. It's so easy for me and Ricky. I see Ricky almost every morning, and it's so easy for me and Ricky to call somebody a dumbass. Like, it's so easy. I mean, like, what a dumbass. Like, we're talking about somebody or something, I'm like, oh, what a dumbass. It's so easy. Instead of us going, well, all right, well, I probably did something similar in my life, too. Doesn't mean I want to continue to be around that person because they may be on the trail and the path of being a dumbass for a long time. But it doesn't mean that I should just automatically uh, think poorly of them because I've done the same stupid things we all have. And we're not going to get any uh, better by focusing on negativity. We're only going to get better by working on ourselves, accepting others, and just moving on. And ignorance is not bliss in my opinion. So thank you for the subject today. <laughs> Thank you. You're a badass. Thank you for taking the veil away, <laughs> opening the curtain. <laughs> well, uh, if y'all enjoyed this, we are here every Sunday at 115. That's 115. And it's 115. It, Mysticsoftexas.com. Mysticsoftexas.com. And if you want to learn more about us, go there and come see us if you're in the local area. And if you want to get to know your food, if you want to grow your own food, we have the facilities to do that. We're really encouraging people to come out and use our facilities to grow their own food for free. And if you want grass-fed, wonderful cows, it's getting close for us to send some to slaughter. Two rules, you got to come out and thank it. We meditate and pray over the cow to say thanks because we appreciate it and we love them. And 
then that's it. That's that's what we do. The second thing is, uh, if you want to help pay for the processing, that'd be great. If not, we'll give it to you. All right. Thank you all. We'll see you next time.